whenever I meet a spiritual person, my default is skepticism. You know, if this is some shaman or this I'm introduced, my default is skepticism. It's because America's think, a hall of mirrors, man. Yeah, exactly. So, and, and a, a lot of times you end up right. And then seldomly, you know, <clears throat> you end up and say, holy shit, this guy's got some power. Yeah. You know, and, and those are the cases. And what, what really defines it is the people who act spiritual and like put on that spiritual face. Oh yeah. Uh, they're usually the ones that are <laughs> charlatans. Of course, man. You know? Like Always. these guys, these shamans uh, that, that, that I've met out in the rainforest and elsewhere, they're the first to laugh, the first to smile, you know, like very real, absolutely. real people, people you would never know was a shaman, except when they start to do work Yeah, they start to mold, you know, dimensions around you and you're like, holy shit. Hey. <laughs> but yeah. to go back to how, how I envision you know, our, ourselves aligned with the different dimensions. It's almost like we're a toothpick piercing all of the dimensions like layers in, a, in an onion. Mm-hmm. And it's actually just that we're not surfing in one or the other. It's just at certain points, our consciousness is traveling up and down that toothpick. Yeah. You know, so you're hitting, we're hitting usually third dimension. You know, that's the dot on the toothpick that we're kind of, you know, that's the layer of the onion we're looking at. But we're really always all connected all the way yeah. up through, you know, through everything. Um, but the shamans can travel that a lot easier or all at once. They can or be all, all there at once. once. And just I, kinda, yeah, yeah. And I guess I mean all. like my metaphor with waves is it's you ex- that almost same expand, type of you expand the dot, you know, of where your consciousness yeah, is. So yeah. It, that's a, yeah. It, yeah, it totally. encompasses all the, all the layers. And I actually was able to experience that in the, uh, when I was taking ayahuasca, you know, mm-hmm. during that, I mean, I could feel that expansion where I could still function in the, in the third dimension, you know, I could hit, I could hit a tennis ball if I needed to. Like if I was like, all right, we're going to rally here for some, yeah. for some weird <laughs> reason. <laughs> right? You know? All right, guys, we're in the rainforest. Look at yeah. that beautiful green, <laughs> green tennis yeah, court. We've I, got could, I could still do that, you know, so I could still operate in the third, but the way I could see and focus in, in those other dimensions was, um, was unique. So it's almost like, yeah, exactly. Like that dot was expanding. Yeah. That's to, a good, to that's a good metaphor. More, more people. Yeah, whenever I was talking about the waves, it's like that was just a, a metaphor for like I guess skipping between those different things yep. instead of like, and then sometimes you'll get stuck on like sure. level seven or sure. level one, you know, depending sure. on what yeah. you've been and up to. And with but... other medicines, you know, that <laughs> certainly happens. Like a certain at a certain point on a mushroom trip, you know, you're fucking stuck in five or six. Yeah. Like you can't really function in the other ones very well. Yeah, and it's it's more tricky. Ayahuasca is the first where I really felt like I could kind of glow with all those. Even the yoga. You know, that was a weird, I don't even know what dimension it was. That was like just Man, inside it? my soul of some, of some, I really felt like I was just in accessed to, you know, that infinite part of myself rather than even out, outward to any other thing. I, I don't even know how to apply that to the metaphor is yeah. basically what I'm saying. It was such a unique and different experience, completely different than any other psychedelic experience, but obviously immensely powerful. So maybe perhaps, you know, like, you know, white noise is the entire frequency spectrum all at once. Yep. That could be it. Could man. be it. You it had could be you it. had conscious white consciousness white noise, man. Yeah. I mean it, it was it was just like it was almost like I was for that period an you know, an infinitely knowledgeable being on a very uncomfortable third dimension body at that point. Yeah. You know, it was like I was just I was my God self, my best self living and accessing in this third dimension world which was pretty miserable at the time i mean i couldn't i couldn't drink i was nauseous I yeah was, you know my body felt like it was being pressed by a pancake and i was stuck <laughs> in a high voltage shed I hate you know? that feeling <laughs> but, but uh but yeah i mean that man the truth the truth that was riding on my shoulder i mean that was a fucking experience like no other yeah you know, like man even thinking about it now it was just such a pleasure you know, man, it's such a pleasure to, to me it, that. It, found, it sounds like uh if you're like driving a little, you know, like a little Honda, like an 89 Honda or something, and you're on a racetrack with a bunch of other race cars, and all of a sudden you're keeping up with them, but your, your vehicle is still this Honda, and you're like, oh, God, <laughs> yeah. it's rattling, yeah. it's going to fall apart, and yeah. it's, it's redlining, but I'm still going 200 miles an hour, so I don't know how I'm doing it, but that's I'm here. It, man. It's like it. the exact same thing. Uh, yeah, that's absolutely right. Yeah, but it's, it's funny how, like, uh, those little, uh, those little, like, flash bombs of, of i don't know it's it's almost like magic or something you can you know where you can have those type of realities and those type of consciousness shifts and then once you have enough of those you go you realize that's all here all the time yeah you know it's always here yeah and whenever you think about you know you start getting tense you're you know you're annoyed at something or frustrated you're like what am i doing like that reality of the most beautiful like aware you know uh clearest 
consciousness that you had in that moment. Like that's with you now, yep. but you're so distracted and like pulled into just the, the show, you know, yeah. you, you're, you're in the theater watching the action film and you've got the white knuckle grip on the, on yeah, the theater no, seats. That's it. It's the wrong, it's yeah. a, as, as my you know, lesson taught me, the wrong person's in charge. You yeah. know, your mind's in charge when that, that <clears> being that soul, that infinite, you know, God self, should be the run running the show, but yeah. so often not. So often it's not. And most people never, I don't think they never do that. They never experience it or they experience it, but they're not aware of what it's like. And so they attribute it to something else. Right. You know, like that's, I think probably a lot of churches or something like that. They somehow, if they, they say they have some type of experience with, you know, some religious experience with like some Western type of church. Yeah. And it's like, no, you were touching on a plane, but it had nothing to do with all that. That was <laughs> right. just a weird, you just like, luckily you were like lost in the mountains yeah. and you were wandering around and you're covered in scabs and sores and you just kind of like, yeah, your milky kind of watery eye that was all dehydrated and you, you saw a little bit of sunlight and you uh, pulled it back and then, oh, wow, there's a beautiful path. Right? You actually you sort of ended <laughs> yeah. up there. You, yeah, you, know, yeah, you, yeah. you went foraging. You should have starved to death, but you sort of, you got lucky. Well, some but, of the, some of them have figured out like the, the churches that do the kind of ecstatic singing and the, yeah. ecstatic, oh, and the breathing yeah. and things like that. Dude, so you're creating these weird states in your mind where that, that cognitive filter, like Aldous Huxley talked about, starts to become porous. Yeah. You know, and you start to let in more of that mystic sensation. So and they've utilized that to their advantage all the time. Oh, so totally. they so they give you a piece of this mystical experience and then put it in and say, Aha, you see, that proves that we're right about everything. Yeah. Because how have you ever experienced this before? Yeah, they're using you know, it for evil. Then, you, yeah, you know? truly. It's, in are, a it's... lot of ways. I mean, now churches are way less evil, but if you take it historically in context, I mean, what's been more evil than the than the church? Yeah, of course. I mean, the nothing. deaths caused, yeah. either in its name or directly, you know, by sure. Inquisition. Man, I went to a dungeon, and I was a, I was in Italy, and I went to a dungeon of the Inquisition. That is the most fucked up place <laughs> yeah. in the fucking world. Yeah, it's like, like being how in an do urban you even or fucking think of all of these? <laughs> like being in urban. Yeah, like Sorry, that, <laughs> like that. Except for the part where there's the hot pinchers that pull yeah. open your dick, yeah. and like what. What possible good reason does the church have for putting a hot pincher in your dick and ripping it open? Like, oh, why? It's a very good like, reason, man. It's because <laughs> nobody... No, yeah, I'm, I'm serious. I'm sure, I'm sure It's yeah. because they... Like, what else... What would convince you more to not stray from what they want you to be doing than a hot pincher in the dick? <laughs> that, that's true. You know that's what I mean? True. It's like, they just really knew how to commit back then, man. You know, they yeah. were like, we want these people to be doing this, and you know what gets people to, to not do things we don't want? It's fucking a searing hot in the dick. pain. Yeah. And, that's, and now it's moved to, yep. since we've all become a little bit more aware of our bodies, you know, over the last couple hundred years, now it's like, it's all psychological, man. Yeah, guilt. And that's, that's the thing that it, I Those just... barbs. Yeah, whenever I see people that are, or talk to people that are caught up in that, man, it's it's just so tragic. And you know, and that's I used to like be really aggressive towards religion. Same with me, man. You know, that's I when I was be, in college. I yeah. was fucking pissed. I was, man. Like, I was livid. Yeah, you and know, you, I was I was going to be the next Christopher Hitchens, even though I didn't know who that was. Like, I yeah. was fucking mad. Totally, man. You and know? you know, that's and I realized that you know, it's I used to be I just resented it and was mad at it because I thought there's all these people that their entire lives, man, they're just like scared and they don't ever feel yep. the beautiful pleasure of like whenever I walk outside and I go, Holy fuck. Like yep. I'm a person. I, I'm, there's a brain and a meat body on a planet floating in the middle of the universe. Like that's how I feel every single day, you know? And it's like, if you can't, you know, people go their whole lives without understanding just the, the majesty and beautifulness of the cosmos, man. And just feel their, like feel your feet on the earth and feel the earth touching you back, you know? Yeah. You're sewn right into the fabric of the cosmos, man. And well, people they, can't they feel take that, away that you know? whole thing. They they take away that experiential connection to the mystic. You yeah. know, and that's that's something that all the shamans hammer in. They're like, our our beliefs are experiential. You can go out there and find them for yourself. We're not gonna tell you, you know, we're not gonna tell you what's up. You're gonna go see it for yourself. And the church is they don't want that. You of know, course. because they're because then you start to see through the veil that they've carefully created. You, so they create yeah. this fucking they're the intermediary between the mystic, you know, like so they can communicate, but you have to go through them. It's just fucking yeah. unreal that they've so that they've basically, you know, cut that part off of humanity. So we have all these people who are living, you know, without one third of what it really truly is to be a human. And yeah. that's and that's yeah. also that's the that's the fucking part that helps you decide everything else. You know, that's where that's the heart of morality. Sure. You know, that's the heart of 
where you figure out what is right and what is good. And they've just cut that off. And guess yeah. what? Not only have they cut that off, they've made the ways to find it illegal. Yeah. You know, like once you're out of it too long, like you can yeah. fucking meditate all you want, but yeah. you need an earth mover. You know, you need the big tractor trailer yeah. to come in and take off fucking heavy amounts of dirt so you can go back and find and reconnect. And that shit's illegal. Yeah. You got to go to fucking Peru or Costa Rica or wherever or, or just have a cool buddy who can give you some <laughs> yeah. mushrooms. But even still, you're taking a risk, you know, and it's, yeah. it's bullshit. And people are scared of it. Not only is it illegal, but they propagandize it oh, as well. Oh, you, you have to. You have to. <laughs> you know, and that's, it's like the church, you know, the, those type of institutions, man, religious institutions and other different things like that. It's like whenever I see those, I'm just like, well, that's a... Line up, line up, everybody, and pay it to get your spiritual amputation. You know, you yeah, go in there yeah, and they're yeah. like, all right, that guy's, let's take off his spiritual legs and fucking get, put a hot poker on that to sear it so it can't grow back and yeah. move along. Give us your, you know, 10% of your income. Yeah, it's like or baptizing is drowning it. Yeah. You know, it's <laughs> yeah, like, right. yeah, oh, yeah, your third eye is open, sweet. Let me douse it in yeah. water until you fucking wake up and it's dead. Yeah. You know? Yeah, man. You, you ever have, like, I, I think a great, as far as people that, you know, are trying to get into meditation and stuff, you know, it's, I think that's the best way to, like, clear the, 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 the runway, you mm-hmm. know, to clear, just to get all the debris off your own runway to get ready to take off, you know. And, and Ma- yes, after, after the fucking major boulders and piles of shit, you know, <laughs> yeah. are cleared off. I mean, I, I don't think people can effectively meditate until they've at least experienced you know, the other side, at least experience mm-hmm. what true being is. You it's know, hard to identify. meditation, yeah, they don't really know what they're going for. Yeah. You know, like, I'm, you know, I meditate with people, and they're like, well, how do you do it? I can't meditate. I, because you've never been to where you're trying to get, yeah. that, that place where you release all thoughts and release your mind and release everything, and you find yourself in alignment and connection. They've never experienced it, so they're just like, well, I, I'm not supposed to think about anything, and I'm not supposed to fall asleep, so we're going to try this out. You know, and maybe yeah. they feel a little better, but I think really the first, the first step is getting people to experience that, like really getting them to feel what it is to just be mm-hmm. and connect. And I, I really think you know, the plant teachers are one of the only ways to do that because we're going to start off way out of balance anyways, unless you're in a really lucky situation where you have a very – you know, spiritually tuned in family and live out in the fucking Which, in the bush somewhere. Yeah, I've never and, met someone yeah, that's come yeah. from that family. <laughs> you know, uh, my, one of my good friends is is uh, is Bodie Miller, and he's not like trained spiritually at all. But he grew up in a house that had no running water. He's an Olympic skier. I don't okay, know if you know who that either. is. Um, but he grew up in a house that had no running water, and out in the middle of New Hampshire. And he basically didn't have much supervision, but he was just outside all day, either on the mountain by himself, going up, wow. cruising down, or running through creeks, or out in the forest, or, you know, and he was, as a teen, he's like making his own sweat lodges and figuring it out. And somehow being that, you know, that has instilled kind of a, a centeredness to him that's unlike almost anybody I've met. <clears throat> and I think so it is possible to get that by just living in nature, yeah. being, figuring shit out, because nature is, is the ultimate teacher you know so he doesn't he wouldn't need you know some massive psychedelic experience to realign him like he grew up with it like he's well aware of it almost like a native american who walks his feet on the earth every day you know like they don't need to take a fucking grip of mushrooms to feel it they can do that you know once they're already there they take that and then it's like rocket fuel you know they're ready to really take off and and figure shit out but it is possible to live in alignment if you started that way but most of us are not starting yeah. that way. You know, we're shoes. We're, we got our Jordans on the pavement and a bunch of fucking television and video yeah. games and all kinds of shit. So at that point, the only thing I think that can really realign you in a massive way is one of the plant medicines sure. and under the guidance of a good shaman. Yeah, man. I mean, it's like all of those things you're talking about him being, you know, on the basically getting to hang out on the side of a mountain as a yeah. young child and yeah. like seeing that mountain and seeing the sky and the stars and everything. Yep. that is the immediate contrast that you need with yourself to understand that you're a part of all of that. Yep. It, there's an infinity there between a loop between you and it, and you are it. Yep. But in our culture, you know, where we live, there's like in between the nature and like the self, there's all of this shit right here, which are the cars, the video games, the shoes, the, yeah. the handbags, yeah. the fancy hotels and all, you know, whatever you have. And those are all the material things, all the distractions, man, you know? And it's a really, you know, how could somebody ever just be born into a normal family and, you know, without some type of extreme experience, 
see through all of that. It's it's so heavily programmed and it's so heavily, uh, you know, um, just aimed at everybody that, you know, that just every normal person out there. And that's why I was kind of talking about meditation being a good first step for people. Like if somebody just like random guy, mm-hmm. you know, that knows not has read none of the you know the books that you and I have probably read right. and had none of these thoughts and not because he's not capable but just because he's just been, he's just a guy like he's just living his life sure. and doing what he thinks right you know and I'll kind of tell someone like that you know meditation is a good place to start like looking like you can start looking for those things and you don't even have to do anything I'll say like just sit like, yeah. just sit for 15 minutes in the morning and 15 minutes at night and just that's it. You don't have to, don't try and not think about anything because that's the infallible way of making sure to think about something. Yeah. You know, and it's like just sit for a while and just keep doing that. And eventually, you know, after like a couple of weeks and you're doing your 15 minutes just sitting, then all of a sudden you'll be like, you know, oh, oh, wait a second. I think, <laughs> you know? I think, you're, I think you're right there. I mean, I think Ald- like Aldous Huxley said, there was, a, you know, doing psychedelic work is like a banquet. You know, it's like a feast. You know, it takes a while to prepare you you know get a ton of material in your system and it takes a little while to recover you know whereas meditation is like your daily sustenance yeah but i really think that a lot of these people you know they don't even know what kind of food they're looking for so oh, they're sure. out there trying to meditate they're just smearing food all over their <laughs> yeah. face and you know but by doing that you know yeah well, something's going to get in your mouth yeah you know yeah, so <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. eventually you're going to you're going to figure it out a little bit but um Man, it's just way easier once you've already once you've already seen that other way. But, oh, of course. Man. But you know, I mean, I'm the last person to say don't meditate, no matter how fucked up you are, because just that that sense of stillness. You know, even if you're not really aligning with the other, just quieting the mind for a minute. You know, is is something remarkable. I mean, so many people, even that moment before bed. They'll fall asleep with the goddamn TV on. Yeah, or so, te- 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 reading, you know, Facebook or whatever. Yeah, or whatever. <laughs> so it's like they don't even have that moment right before mm-hmm. bed where you get to kind of process some thoughts and drift naturally into sleep. It's like input, 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 input from some, you know, external input, yeah. and then pff, blackout. You know, and then they wake up and they're back at it again, and it's just they never get that moment. So yeah, you know, meditation is extremely valuable, and it's going to become you know, more valuable as technology gets fucking more crazy. Yeah, man. That's, I mean, that's what I try and think about is, you know, you get so used to your own reality, you know, you get so used in the things that, and it's like this, it's like working on this mixer yeah. to me, like a mixer is, I know it like the back of my hand, you know, and what all the things do, but whenever, you know, you're looking at it, it's like, Oh, what's that do? What's that do? And you learn really quickly, but it's like, you weren't familiar with it all. And right. so if you think about like our different reality maps in that moment where, you know, I knew it was all familiar to me and it seemed like second nature, but then you needed to learn it right quick. Yep. And, you know, it's it has obviously you're a very intelligent person, but it's just that you hadn't been familiarized with that type of system. Yep. And that's how like the the expansion of consciousness is for a lot of people. So whenever I try and talk to friends of mine or people that I meet, I remember, OK, like they don't know how to work this mixer. You <laughs> right. know what I mean? They need to, they need to be shown really quick and you got to find a starting point. You know, it's like, um, if I came in here and started, you know, it was like, Hey, how are you doing? Let's talk about like triod, pentode, harmonic enhancements and stuff. And yeah, sound. I, I would have thought you were a dick. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not only would have thought I was a dick, but then you'd be like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? Get out of here. Yeah. It's like, why would I do that? And so I think it's the same type of thing is like, I try and find these starting points where I remember, Oh yeah. Like, I think about this thing, stuff all day long, every single day. Like I'm so disembodied at this point. Like I, this is a little joke of mine is I'll be like brushing my teeth and I'll go over to my girlfriend and be like, Hey, the alien is scrubbing its head hole again. You know, it's <laughs> like, that's how fucking like detached I am. Um, but you know, most people, man, they never have a thought like that or they think it's funny or weird or something. But so yeah. it's like, I try and think of these ways to get people just to kind of take that first step. And that's like, I think meditation is a cool thing because you can't really go up to like your, you know, your uncle or something or, you know, and go, Hey man, you should try seven grams of mushrooms. You know, you gotta be like, depends on your uncle. Well, of course. But you know, you gotta be like, Hey, you know, you should, uh, you know, you should try like meditating, just sit yeah. and resting the body, man. You know, if you can get that, your vehicle to rest a little bit and to get centered, then the mind is the next thing that kicks in, you know? And uh, you know, it's a good that's it. another thing. I mean, people take such shit care of their bodies. Yeah. You know, and I actually think yoga is a pretty good form of active meditation because oh, yeah. sometimes you need that <clears throat> you need that external distraction or not external. I mean, it's, it's internal. It's your body. 
but you need that physical stimulus distraction to kind of help quiet the mind sometimes. Yeah. Um, so I would, I would highly recommend, I always recommend yoga. To yeah. That's these what I, people. I mean, it's something physical. It's good for their body. It's stretching out, yeah. you know, pockets and muscles and things that need to be stretched. And it's also, you know, a good way to find meditation. I mean, Shavasana has been, which is the final rest period for those who don't do yoga at the end of of most good yoga. You know, you lay down there, it's called corpse pose and you lay down your palms up and your heels open and you just kind of receive. And at that point, your body's kind of exhausted. You've sweat a lot. At least I go to hot yoga. So you sweat a lot and you feel really good and you can travel, you know, you're just light, you know, you can travel fast and far in those kind of short meditations. They go three minutes and you, they say, all right, now, you know, got another class coming in. You're like, whoa, you know, (laughs) like a little mini DMT trip. (laughs) And it's just fucking fast. Man, I'm always in corpse pose. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Just any, any time of day, man, no matter what I'm doing, (laughs) I'm like, just look at that silly little meat sock. Yeah. You know, it's just full of, it's just got this little squirt of ego in there, man. It's just wandering around, you know, this, this dead, you know, this, this dead little, uh, meat sock, man, just trying to, you know, move this light along. I had this crazy, I'll tell you about this really quick. I had this crazy dream. Um, it was this lucid dream, probably thanks to the alpha brain. All right. I'd like to hear it. (laughs) And oh, as a quick digression, man, I had no idea that Alpha Brain was based in in Austin. Yeah. And uh, after I heard about it, and I ordered the first one to try it out, uh, it got to me in like a day. You're like, damn, that customer. Yeah, I was like, I was like, holy (laughs) shit, man, these guys are like, did did they give him the postman this shit too? But then I saw it was based in Austin. We could almost, we could almost high powered slingshot to the house actually. So we'll we'll work on that delivery system next time. (laughs) So uh, anyway, man, uh, yeah. So I, you know, I had some alpha brain, you know, and then uh, I had this dream where it was one of these super lucid things, like I totally felt awake during it, and I was just laying there. And I'd done, you know, uh, I'd gotten really deep on, you know, I do what I call like lazy yoga every day, (laughs) which is just like, it's kind of like different resting postures. So you're not like going crazy where you're, you know, trying to lick your own asshole or anything, (laughs) but you're definitely stretching the extremities. Which is the goal of all yoga, (laughs) actually. Of course. Have you seen some of those babas over there, man? That's the type of stuff they do. They're like, I'm enlightened. I can like put a pencil around my dick and twist it 80 times or whatever. (laughs) And that's like them showing off. And it's like, man, that's. An interesting good, goal, my friend. Good job, buddy. Yeah. Anyway, so, uh, you know, I, I did some real, real deep, you know, uh, vibrations, you know, and really lowered it down, you know, uh-huh. or sped it up, however you want to say. So I was in bed and, you know, had this dream that was like just this body and I was laying there and it felt like a, like a kind of like a salvia thing or something where it's this, oh yeah, you know, this, the XYZ axis of space and time is just right here, you know, hanging out and you can see like there's blackness for, you know, a hundred thousand feet, you know, on all sides around you kind of that type of thing. And I was laying there and I had these gigantic hands, these huge hands like coming down and like messing with my body. And I was, that's your uncle fool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Damn. I shouldn't have, I gave him the wrong capsules. I gave him the ecstasy. Yeah. Um, anyway, so I felt these giant hands like messing with my body and, uh, I was thinking, oh, what's going on? It was like fixing, like tinkering, like my body was uh-huh. a, like a machine. Yep. And, the, and it started communicating through just kind of these vibrations through through the hands into me, telling me that it was like, don't worry, your consciousness is this light inserted into this vehicle, which is your body. And I'm just helping you out because you're doing a good thing. Like what you're doing with your life is you're, you're you know, doing what we need you to do. And so I'm basically going to repair your vehicle a little bit. And it was like, there's also some kind of rotten part of your spirit inside. I'm going to help kind of like if something is burned and you can knock off the ashes sure. and then kind of, okay, well that's still burned, but it doesn't have all the gnarly stuff hanging on. It was like, I'm going to take that gross kind of corroded part of your soul away and fix that. And it's like, I'm going to fix you up because what you're doing is basically your, your life, uh, your body is just, is just a, is a, nonsensical vehicle thing and the and what we do is we are on this other plane where we take these little light consciousness things drop them into these bodies and then they run their course on this plane in order to generate energy for this other plane whoa and so it goes the more yeah. times that you 
do this and you do your service and you can figure out how to generate the right type of energy and vibration for this plane, you'll eventually get graduated up into other more intense because you have the ability to, yeah. to generate more energy. And then eventually you'll get to a place where you start helping others and repairing others and help a bunch, you get assigned a bunch of smaller people to help you know, control them. So he was like, you're on the right path. And I'm kind of like, we don't fix things like vehicles normally, but I'm going to fix you and help you get ready for the next half of your life. That is a powerful dream, my friend. That it was sounds, amazing. That sounds extremely psychedelic, you know. I mean, it, and I guess it just attests to the fact that when you're, you know, doing your earnest to stay aligned and stay open, you know, something as simple as sleep can give you as profound a psychedelic experience as any of these medicines can do. I mean, that's a testament to that. There, it's funny that you say that because at, at a certain point in an early, early mushroom trip I had, and I haven't really paid much attention to this to this belief system. Um, either, but it came to me in this early trip, and it was remarkably similar to what you were saying. It was basically saying that, you know, by spreading that life force energy, you know, that which is good, you know, which is our ultimate goal in being this, not only to experience everything in the physical in the physical realm, but also to promote life and promote good and promote love. You know, by generating that energy, that was actually the force that was carrying our universe out farther in its expansion. And at the point where life stopped doing that, that's the point where the, en the energy of the universe ran out of steam and actually started to collapse on itself again. That's interesting. And so it was a really kind of similar thing that I had, uh, and I haven't really thought too much about it because, I don't know, it just, you just kind of brought it up here. Mm -hmm. I mean, as certain aspects of it have <clears throat> been re you know, repetitive themes in my experiences, like the Aboga experience with where I viewed uh, the universe as the heartbeat of God and God was running because... You know, that whole, I, I don't need to repeat that whole thing. Well, maybe I should. Well, anyway, so I, I, viewed, <clears throat> I viewed the universe when I asked the Boga, I was like, what's the nature of the universe and infinity? And I saw these planets expelling out. It's like, boom. You know, and I saw all the planets going and going. And then I saw them eventually running out of energy. And when they ran out of energy, they started to collapse on themselves. And then, boom, another big boom in life and all of its creations and all of its glory came out, spiraling out again. And obviously this takes place over trillions billions billions of trillions of years or whatever it transcends time. <laughs> it transcends time exactly but all of that was then contained inside a giant heartbeat and that heartbeat was in this translucent blue titan which i understood to be god and god was running on this track and god's running was giving the energy for the heartbeat to keep pumping they kind of fueled fueled themselves and i understood at that point that god's love was the commitment to keep running you know to keep this <clears throat> keep this heart pumping keep life going and life flowing so some themes you know have stayed stayed with me and the one of the universe the energy of the universe going out and then you know collapsing that's been one of my earliest truths but then the idea that we were actually generating that energy <clears throat> was something i kind of dropped along the way but now that you bring it up it's kind of a, a curious thing to think about and um you know probably in some way maybe not in this kind of direct correlation like i first saw it or maybe like your dream said but you know maybe there is some some aspect of that you know maybe it's not only that it gives it energy but it's why it exists in the first place you yeah. know you do that it all exists so you can do that you know so that you can push that energy out there in the universe it's an interesting way to think about it yeah i mean that's kind of what i was talking about earlier about you know <clears throat> if you can put out more than you're taking in uh -huh. you know that seems to not only just be the best way to you know live your life but it also you know the more you do that the more things kind of come to you and i've always had this weird kind of problem with that where people say man if you just do good and you keep being good you know and you, and you do things for the right reasons like good things will happen to you that feels a little weird to me you know because it's like well i'm not doing it because i want good things to happen to right. me. i don't care what happens to me Right. Like, I don't need anything good to happen to me. Like I'm totally, right. I'm fine. I'm just chilling <laughs> right. in my meat body, man. Right. <laughs> you know, like I don't need anything else, you know? Um, and so, uh, but anyway, if you can, you know, if, if everyone can get to that type of place where they're, they're putting out more than they're taking in, then it's going to generate more of that type of energy and add more to the expansion or to the, you know, where the, the power transformer for some other dimension of yeah. sentient ancient beings, <laughs> you know, whatever it might be. I mean, it seems intuitively, it feels like the path, you know, yeah. and uh, getting all those vibrations in sync. I don't know, you know, the, the next question, of course, is like, for what purpose? And it's 
like if we are generating energy for these ancient beings in the DMT world or this other you know layer of the fat, you know universe or we're generating energy to make the universe expand like you were talking about like to what end you know that's that's <clears throat> a question that's never been never been difficult for me and uh, and that goes to the very meaning of life you know why why are we here why? Because it's fucking magic here. Yeah. You know what? It's fucking magic here. You get to love. You get to laugh. You get to cry. You get to fight. You get to fuck. You get to smell. You get to eat. You know, you don't get to do any of that shit in the spirit world. I'm know? dirty. I do all those things at once. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Sam- <you're- laughs> sandwich crying, laughing, <laughs> fucking, smoking, eating. That's perfect. Yeah. You know, that's that's why, man. I mean, there, there doesn't. there's magic here. There's yeah. There's real, real magic here. Absolutely. And when you have that... You know, when you're in that kind of universal, you know, perfect truth of God, you know, there's there's some bliss, but there's not that fucking magic. Yeah, those, you know? those bliss ninnies you got to watch out for, man. Yeah. The people, it's like you're talking about the people that uh, go around. I can't remember if we are talking about this before we started recording or not, but. No, I think it was on the podcast. Okay. Yeah. The people that say, oh, I'm, uh, you know, I'm really uh, working, uh, you know, at my, my optimum to dissolve my ego. Right. You know, and that's like what it's like, come on, man. Those are the people that are the most, they're way more the arrogant than like a girl. sports star. You know, yeah. it's because you're, you're, you're like a snake with its tail in its mouth, man. Walking yeah. around going, oh, I, I'm, you know, I'm so ho- much holier than you. <laughs> and, you yeah. know, I've really found the secret. It's like, man, if you can even define the secret, then you need to reassess because the secret has no definition. Yep. It's like the, the that you know it's just the state of being is is what's beautiful and what's magnificent you know and i totally agree and love that idea of living just to you know be here and to be now and just observe this just the multiplicity of just fireworks that yeah. it is just being awake you know and yep you know i think that's that's it. that's it and and to go back to kind of another point that you were just saying you know i think so there's the people who are you know affecting spiritual you know those pseudo spiritual and they're the fucking worst <laughs> yeah. but then you know there's another there's another group that i think are missing it too and those are the ascetics you know those are the people who are denying themselves all of the earthly enjoyments sure. and you know i think carlos castaneda said it said it well and I'll, i'm paraphrasing here but he said um, denying oneself is an indulgence it makes you feel like you're doing great things when really you're just focused on yourself. Absolutely. You know, so you think like, oh, I'm, I don't have sex and I don't eat and I don't, you know. Abstaining is abs- an addiction. Yeah, exactly. And, and you feel like you're doing this magnanimous thing. What are you doing? You're just not fucking and not eating. Like, who's that helping? <laughs> you? Only you. It's not helping anybody else. So you feel like you're, you know, doing some incredible thing just because other people aren't doing it. But really, you're just focused on yourself. Why don't you help another motherfucker? Yeah. You know, it's like stop. Stop spending all of your time doing something that makes you feel good for some reason, which is the abstaining part, you know, and actually go help somebody. Yeah, if, it's funny that someone that spends their, their whole story, their whole, like, what they're about is the middle way is, like, got the, you know, they're jerking the wheel in the car. <laughs> they're, they're, like, scrubbing the wheel to the curb, man. Yeah. They're like, oh, yeah, I'm the middle way. I'm so centered and so focused. And I, you know, am walking this path of enlightenment. And I'm not bothered by food or by sex or <laughs> yeah. by attachment. It's like, man, you're just doing the opposite of having lots of sex and lots of food. It's <laughs> right. like if you were in the middle way, man, just find the balance between both of those things. It's like all exactly. things are weighted, you know. Exactly. And as you said, it's just this weird form of ego trip where it's like, oh, yeah, I can't be bothered with that. I'm fasting. It's like <laughs> <laughs> right. unless you're doing that because you're, don't, you're not comfortable enough with your body to get a colonic, man. Yeah. You, know? <laughs> no one, you know, you're just wasting time. Yeah. And, you know, uh, it's, uh, that's why I, I kind of used to really, really well, be. Or just, or just fucking do it. <clears throat> don't talk about that's, it. Like, man, like if you're just going to, yeah, if yeah. you're going to fast, great. That's you it. Know, just don't make a big deal about it. That is it. That you is know? it. That's why, I, man, that, I think about that and talk to people about that all the time. I'm like, I, you know, a lot of people I run into, I never talk about stuff like this, Yeah, you know, because like, why would you like it, just do, do what you're doing and live your life and try and, you know, uh, do all of those things we've been talking about, but there's no reason to everyone you meet. Oh, hi. How are you? Yeah. I was thinking about, uh, you know, the, the most 
bizarre detached level of consciousness earlier let's talk about that a little bit it's like what kind of asshole it's like me (laughs) walking in here talking about some crazy sound shit with you straight off it's like dude what are you doing just do your stuff you know and uh well it's like any professional you meet any like really professional that you meet and and like like Stephen pressfield said he talks about professionals in in the war of art it's fantastic yeah yeah but a real professional you're not going to know what they do right off when you meet them you know like if it's a professional tennis player, they're not going to meet you and be like, hey, guess what? I just won Wimbledon seven years <laughs> yeah. ago. You know, Did you know that about me? I think, oh, your thighs look and, like that fucking boar outside. <laughs> yeah. You must be a tennis player. Yeah. You know, and it, but it, it goes with anything, like fighters, whoever, totally. like a real professional. Artists, man. Artists, oh, my yeah. God. Yeah.